this episode, I'm gonna take you to unexpected places and be very interesting. I'm going to take you on a road trip around the island, starting by Ocherius on the north coast, where I'll meet Bali, and together, we'll try the best pudding in Jamaica. After that, we'll hit the road west, stopping by cockpit country to taste some rum, before continuing our journey to Montego Bay, where my brother Kimani and I will reminisce about our past. The last stop of our road trip will be a very special one. I'm taking you to the League of Champions, and I'll introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Lewis. So fasten your seatbelt, and check this out. <laughs> I'm living for the young and the old, the blind and the deaf from the dumb, as you know. My name is Johan Marley. I was born in Jamaica, but I've lived most of my life in America. The truth is, the moment you step foot in Jamaica, man, there's something special about this place. The food, the people, the culture. A taste of Marley is a journey around Jamaica. I'll make you discover the spirit and the beauty of my country. Did anyone call Bali? Because Bali lives right there in Ochi. We're going to Ochi Ridge. We're going to see the pudding man. Marlon! <laughs> Joseph, let's go. We got to go. <laughs> Bali, what's up, bro? I'm just now leaving Kingston on the way down. You want to meet us over by the pudding guy? Yep. On the road again with good old Marlon. So yesterday, we spent a day at a wedding. My good friend Roger got married. Roger Chang is a close friend of I and my brothers. His grandparents started Tasty, a restaurant chain serving traditional Jamaican food everywhere in and around Kingston, most famously for their amazing patties. Oh, this is, oh, talk about, like, this is Tasty's patties. This is what we're talking about. Hey, you know what? You say it, it happens. There it is. Tasty's patties since 1966. Is there is someone eating patties? No way. Is that tasty spaghetti? Oh my oh word. word. Look at the, just, just look at your crust. Look at your crust, look at your flakes on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> a patty is a pastry filled with anything from meat to fish to vegetables, cooked with spices, baked in a flaky shell. Patties and jerk chicken are some of the most popular dishes on the island and you can find them on every street corner. Right, we're just stopping at the Bobman Museum real fast. This is original for six weeks. This is the home of my father that we turned into the Bob Marley Museum in 1987. Every time we hit the road, we stop to grab a bite at One Love Cafe. Have a veggie burger? Sure. Yeah, give me a ride, natty ride. Cinnamon, honey, nutmeg, flaxseed. Oh yeah, flaxseed is good for me. Yeah, man, rose water. Rose water as well? Yeah, man, just a tip. Tip of rose water. Don't, Don't put any rose water. No rose water. Vanilla. A little tip of vanilla. OK. Yeah. All right, beautiful. Just a, tip. a tip of molasses. Just a tip. Great. Lovely. This looks good, brother. OK. Mm. Thank you. Marlon, ready? Thank you. Thank no, you, man. I'm not ready. Oh, you're not ready? I'm going to order something. I'll order something also. No, I'm going. What are you talking about? You're not ready. We'll leave. Yeah, leave. I got the key. Bro. Stop, Marlon. Right, let's go. <laughs> Oh, you park right by me. Good job, Marlon. Thanks, bro. You captured the smile. <laughs> yes, they did. All right. Oh, Chirias, here we come. Look at this road, man. I love this road. Oh, Chirias is located on the north coast of Jamaica in St. Anne's Parish, about 90 minutes from Kingston. Ochi, as we call it, was once a fishing village surrounded by waterfall. But now it's home to one of the biggest beach resort spots of the island. I'm sure you recognize Bali, one of my best friends and a partner in Marley Coffee. Here it is, just cool pudding. <laughs> this is a grocery store in the deli. Marketing the best pudding ever. People travel from all corners of the island to get a slice. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, oh that looks good. Is there any milk in this pudding? Oh, oh Rasta style. This is what I want to try. Oh. Ooh. Every time you cut it, I'm gonna say ooh and ow. Oh. It looks so good. I remember I used to bake pudding back in the day. But you didn't try this? Oh, it's the hot sweet potato one. The hot one, the hot one. Oh, it's delicious. Oh my gosh. A rasta place, isn't it? And this is the pudding man, Mr. Wallace. You see that? The minute there's a rasta fire, Mr. Wallace up here. 
Roman. <laughs> nice meeting you, guy. Yes, Mr. Wallace. All right. So tell us, how long you been baking pudding, man? Um, over 14 years. So I noticed, like, the cream and the crust and how rich it is. Where you get that recipe from? Well, we have to kind of invent our own little style. Yeah. In the early days, nobody really understand how to get the pudding out the pot. <laughs> so we usually bake it the night before, and in the morning when it's cooled down, it's a, yeah. we take it off, take the knife and cut off because it usually burns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife, we had developed this new style, and we use the wax paper The now. wax papers. Oh. So everybody come here for the hot pudding. Hot pudding. Because in the early days, we yeah, always I, I, get cold. cold. Never hot. <laughs> yeah. That's how we have three different type of pudding. We have potato, we have palm and we have toto. Toto, what is it? Okay. okay. Toto is really made out of um, coconut. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. I haven't had food like this since I was maybe all four years all old. All over the world, you know. Really? It goes to Canada. Yes. It goes to England. Yes. And it goes to every state in America. Last week, a week before last, mm -hmm. was Shelly and Fraser here. Mm -hmm. You're right you know, the week before that, Ziggy Marley's brother, um... um Kimani. Kimani. Kimani, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but Kimani. So, let me introduce myself probably. I am yeah. also Rohan Marley. Rohan Marley. <laughs> Rohan Marley. <laughs> I'm, so also Ziggy's, I'm also Ziggy's brother. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take you guys in the kitchen and I'm gonna show you how we mix it. Oh, we go that. guys, right. we're, we're going into the secret compartment. So here All we right. are. Okay, so here we are. This is a little magical kitchen. Yes. The first thing we do is we put a little raisin. Add fresh coconut juice, natural vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, cinnamon. Give it a good stir then. Grate a piece of nutmeg. I used to do the same thing with coffee. Okay. When you I mix it from up, bacon. I always teach them that you must taste to make sure everything is in there. Then you add the main ingredient depending on the pudding. In this case, potato. There's no way we could grate this amount of potato. So we have a machine that shreds the potato. I used to have them grater, and I see people fall asleep on the grater. <laughs> so I said, no, this is not right. This looks like <laughs> the old, old time slavery days. So I decided, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I went to Miami, and I got me a machine that shreds the potato. Right. Then you blend everything together to get a smooth batter, and when it's ready, oh. sorry about that. Mix it with flour, now then to the, the pot. pot. Okay. Oh, yes. And then you throw it out to your batter. Yeah. Take a look oh, at it. Wow, this amazing. is a complete pudding. And off to cooking, traditional yes, style yes, of coal fire. The that you see we so mixed these up. Are, these are all your coal fires? All my coal fires, yes. I used corn. to bake like this yes. when I was a little boy, too. <laughs> yeah. OK, this is what it looks like wow. when it's complete. This is the original way. Yes, this is one of the potatoes. Beautiful. Okay, this is ready to serve. Yeah. This one here, you set in the fire to put on another one. Yeah, it's like... And another one. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and another one. And another one. <laughs> you get any sample of our pudding? Yeah. What did we try, Balram? We tried the sweet potato. The sweet potato. Did you get any of the cornmeal? I tried the cornmeal. didn't get any of the toto? No toto. All right, come inside. Thank you, brother. What is the, this? Those are the toto. Toto. This is going to take me back. Oh, yeah. Thank you for waiting. This is the best Toto cake I ever had, though. You hear that? So you got all you want to get out of the pudding man today? You know, except for some more pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Bally, check it out, Bally. Bally. It's a blessed. But look, it's not just I on the shirt. You got Beanie Man. It's a famous the shirt. Miss Wallace is, what would, what would be the right terminology to say, Miss? A blind lady. Miss Wallace is a blind lady. <laughs> yes. Well, she, like, if I got somebody in the store and their hands are not theirs, I have eyes I don't see, she see. Yeah. Don't ask me how. Yeah. She have her little ways of setting traps and always find out who is taking what. From yeah. Who yeah. Who <laughs> I went to the blind school in, in, in Southwest, so you know the blind school gonna teach you a lot of stuff. Yeah, the blind yes, school. Yes, yeah. yes, Respect, yes, so. yes. Mr. Wallace. Yes. Mr. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, Rastafari. Yeah, well, if you well, pass well. by Ochi, stop and say hi to the Wallaces and grab a slice of sweetness. The best pudding in the world. Yes. Where we find it? Right here at Joe School, Main Street <laughs> Priory. Coming up, I'm tasting, I'm tasting rum. To drink it so fast. <laughs> Today, my friends and I are taking you on a road trip around the island to meet amazing people and taste delicious Jamaican products. And we're about to do just that. Yeah, you know, the hills, you know? That's where the wild man love, the hills. Yeah, the wild land. All around. <laughs> Welcome to Jamaica, where the fun at, uh, where we party all times like non stop. Uh. I'll take you on the beach when the sun hot uh, and give you a luxury uh, guess uh, so you comfort. Uh. And if a high grade you want, uh, we run that, uh, or just burn as a uh, like you can't done that. Uh. It's wild, man. 
<laughs> this is Hampden Estate, located 40 minutes east of Montego Bay, right at the limit of St. James and Trelawney parishes. And we're meeting with one of my good friends and owner, Christelle Harris. Welcome Please. to my home. <laughs> Where you? A beautiful place you have here. Thank you. Well, welcome to Hampden. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for coming. Hamden is one of the oldest sugar estates on the island, built in the mid-18th century. Crystal's family has transformed this place into a rum distillery, focusing on sustainability. Since Crystal and I go way back, she made her famous rum punch to welcome us. Cheers. Rastafari, love. Rastafari. Bless you. This will not be your traditional tour. Mom, <laughs> you're driving, so pardon me. Mom, Oh, you feel you? Oh, sorry. Wildman's in his feelings. We get in our feelings once a day, one of us. Once a, oh, yeah? One, Hello, yesterday man. was Marlon. Yes. Today it's, oh, here he comes. He's back, he's back. Ooh. Yesterday Marlon was in his feelings because of his terrible driving. <laughs> and now it's right, this guy. Do. We're waiting for I'm Joseph. Wrong, yeah. Joseph's next. So what's this one called? This one is a rum fire, rum punch. A rum fire, rum, yo. I think um, I would say rum in Jamaica is a part of our culture, you know what I mean, right? Absolutely, Because the yeah. estate's been around for, what, since the 1700s? Yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, we've made change now. That Crystal family is in charge. Right. <laughs> so right. A lot of changes. Right. More sustainable. Right. Um, the community is more involved. Yes. On, on, on voluntarily. 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 <laughs> as far as work, the workforce. Right. But the prior owners here. Yes. Even the old church you passed by over there. Right. That church was built not with forced labor. Oh, so, so this region is a yes. different region. It's a different region. What would we call the region? Well, we're at the bottom of the cockpit country. Cockpit country is a land covered by rainforest, conical hills, and steep sided hollows. Back in the 18th century, this landscape created a natural defense system used by the Maroons, the first Africans to escape slavery, to develop communities and free settlements. It's very strange to be sitting here with you, but very nice at the same time. I remember the days when I had first met you. We used to live in the same building, and I remember like it was yesterday when you'd sit at, around the pool at Palazzo, yeah. our complex, every yeah. day, and you were bussing your ass working on your Marley coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy for you, Anna. Yeah. And because a lot of people assume that people that have success or that have had success before them, right. they kind of just step into it and it doesn't sure. take any hard work. And for some people that might be true. Sure. But for you and me, that's a different thing. Sure. And, and I can relate to yeah, that. Absolutely. And, and I admire that so much about you. And so it's really nice to be able to sit here with you <laughs> and experience it. Yeah, the that's that's our label. that's our Jeep that Marlon left on the windows down and the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I remember also meeting you and um I just watched you as an entrepreneur, you know? And then when you left LA and you told me, you know, I have to go to Jamaica now and really get involved with the family business. I was like, all right. But when I came here and saw your foot in it and the turns and the changes that you've made to really make this your family's brand looks so beautiful now, and, and your commitment to excellence, I mean, really, dude, let me just, the vibe of the place is beautiful. And build your family's legacy further on. I'm inspired by you also, madame. I feel so good chit-chatting with Christelle while sipping that delicious fire punch that I almost forgot about rum. <laughs> but I give thanks that Mr. Wisdom is here to tell us everything about it. So, at the cane field, do we burn the cane before you chop the cane? Yeah. Okay, good. The cane is burnt to yes. get rid of the trash and stuff. It's cut. Yes. It's taken to the factory where yes. it's milled. Now, what we're interested in is the juice, just the cane juice. Store it and allow the natural yeast present in the cane to it first ferments to alcohol. Then the bacteria, Acetobacter, takes over and it converts the alcohol into vinegar. Now, that is what we are interested in. So we add that to our mix where we have molasses, which we would now get from a sugar factory. They have gone through the entire process. Which is a byproduct of still the of cane. The, uh, yes. And we dilute the molasses down to with water. We have a dam, special for years it's up Very there. special. The York Dam. What well, makes it special? From. Well, it's the flora and fauna that's present in that era. It's right under the foothills of Queen of Spain Valley. So there are some underground springs and that has been dammed for from 70. It's about three miles feet. away from here. Right. Mm -hmm. That water comes down with certain microbes in it that when they, when they, when, you know, you would have some amount of yeast, some amount of oh. bacteria in that water. 
I should have told it, you. It's, it's, no, no, no. It's, you're supposed to smell. I wasn't supposed smell. to tell you. You weren't supposed to drink it so fast. That's 71.9% <laughs> alcohol by volume. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it is. So what you're used to is something at 40%. So that's we needed 71. The, we needed the, that's come straight from the barrel. Well, I've had barrel wrong. <laughs> Continue, sir. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Please do not let me stop you. Oh, Lord. We also reuse our dunder, which is the residue from the distillation, previous distillation. So we are reusing the waste. So, to, back, to so it ties into the sustainable right. movement. Right, and, beautiful. And, and um, we allow this mixture to sit in the vat and it ferment about two weeks. By that time, it's sort of dying off or died off. But two weeks sounds uh, like not that impressive, but contextually, no, two weeks No, in terms of fermentation, I mean, a, a regular crazy. fermentation is like 24 hours. Sure. And it allows all of this character that you're supposed to be smelling, not tasting. Sure. Smelling. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, smelling. <laughs> oh, that see. smells so see. nice. But remember my instructions, though. Yes, ma'am. Hold it away from your nose first, and yeah. then allow it to, to waft mm. a little bit. Oh, wow. You see, when you give me a direction, I can pick up. Yes, but then if I don't give you a direction, oh, you just dis disobey <laughs> everything I even haven't said. Butterscotch. <laughs> Because so, it's like coffee, you know, and it's have notes. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, so you must understand that. I can still feel the barrel. <laughs> oh, so man. rather than looking at the distillery, I've asked Crystal so if we could just here? get this some fresh what? air, oh, walk oh, around the property like, instead. This one was probably in use for How old is decades it? and decades. A lot older than you and me. 50 plus years. Yep, 60 plus. 60, perhaps. yep. The and she insisted from? we pay no, tribute to her funny. ancestors. Hmm. Not really oh, my I'm cup sorry, of tea. Ha! Is, <laughs> I don't even do this stuff. A few headstones. Uh, I actually, I really like it because 17, it's... 17, wait a minute. It's commemorative 1795? Yes, it? exactly. Just picture, just yeah. picture Casco. Right, it's like go. Charlotte's This is fellow. scary. Mm -hmm. Then a quick tour of the estate. You could stay here for the night. You would not be freaked out. I don't think I can do it. As the sun goes down, everything looks kind of spooky. That <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that's creepy, Crystal. What, Where's the donkey? That? There's a donkey? That used to be outside my dolly house when I was a baby. That's creepy. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us to your beautiful estate. I mean, your family has done such a great job as entrepreneurs, as helping our communities develop in all these beautiful things here, you know? And it's such a great place to come and experience. And even, like I said, wake up the ancestors to know that we have moved forward beyond those days and we're no longer anyone's anything. We're now the leaders of that movement, you know? So it's just a time and thing. So I respect and thank respect. you so much. Love and happiness. Thank you so and much. You after the break, I'm chilling with my little brother, King Man. <laughs> the boys and I left Kingston this morning for the first day of our road trip. After it's tasting delicious. the best pudding with Bali, drinking rum with Cristal, we're making a quick soup stop before reaching Montego Bay for the night. You know Jamaica is known for the street vendors. Of course. Let's go check out this great soup, man. The best soup in Jamaica. The best soup in the world, I hear. My man. It's the man? What are you doing, sir? <laughs> Pleasure, sir. Pleasure, sir. Good day, sir. What is the soup you have here, sir? It's a corn soup mixed with veg and nuts. Y'all want soup? Hey, but before y'all get y'all soup. It's some corn in the soup. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. Yes, sir. I'm good. Thank you, sir. That's a true ITEL spot. Oral Powell is known all over the island wow. for a sip. Yeah. You got some here, Oral. <laughs> Maybe the corn, vegetables, and peanuts are from local farmers. Delicious. How's the soup? Your sip is very equipped. You know, so I made my lip. Look. Mm -mm. Oh, you don't really drink soup now? I don't really drink soup a lot, but this soup is really magnificent. You know, Marlon? It's rich, rich, rich. It's rich. It reminds me of my youth. It's, it's nostalgic. <laughs> this is Jamaica, man. When you drink this soup, you're in Jamaica. Ital. Right, fire? Yes, fire. Well, well, you're not so much of a fire, cuz. <laughs> but you have it, though. You still have it. Thank you for the soup, man. You get a 10 from me. Time to forward to our last destination of the day, Montego Bay. Located in the parish of St. James, on the west part of Jamaica's north coast. Mobe is the epicenter of tourism in Jamaica. My brother Kimani stopped by for a drink. I don't think many people know the love I have for you as my little brother, yeah. who I've raised you yeah, true. as a young man. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> we can't deny that. That is true. Yo, Joseph, who thinks I'm my brother, right? 
when you were like five years old, yeah. living in Falmouth, I took a minivan. <clears throat> Remember that too? By myself. I remember from that. From Spanish Town to go see you. I came to your house, and now uh, Kimani's mother is the national tennis champion in Jamaica. But he also has an uncle called Bumpy, which is like the Jamaican at that time. Yeah, man. The most skillful soccer player I, I ever know <coughs> in my life. So growing up, Kimani and I, I'm older than him. How old are you right now, today? 41? <laughs> 41. 41. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> 45, four years. But Kimani, at six years old, was like the football god. <laughs> like, they, they, like, they talked about him as like the king of football. Like, at six years old, he was like a dream player. And I always, I'm always <laughs> incompetent. I'm like, I can juggle more. No, you're not the dream. I'm the fucking dream guy. You're, you're not. Yeah. So years later, we moved to Miami, and we had the same problem. Kimani is better than you at soccer. <laughs> I said, how can my little brother be better than me at soccer? Let's juggle the ball now. Man, the man beat me juggling the football. I think I was 14, and he was 10. And he beat me juggling the ball. 10-year-old. So... All those years, growing up with my little brother, I mean, I'm talking about watching him grow, like as far as going into <clears throat> music. I'm like, music? You do music now? <laughs> he just, I mean, he just surpassed me in everything. And then you had a beautiful song. This song you did for all of your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You had the courage <laughs> to do it. Like, we couldn't sing this word. We couldn't yeah. say this. Yeah. Dear dad. Yeah. Dear, dear dad. Listen to the words. Um, um, dear God, I have a letter here from me to dad. And I want to let you know, might be a little sad. Dear God, a letter here from me to dad. And I want to let you know. Here it goes. Dear dad, I really didn't get to know you. And sometimes I sit and wonder and it makes me blue. But there's one memory that stays on the back of my mind. And this memory got me thinking about you all the time. Whoa, I swear we miss you so. And I wish that you was here to see your boys grow. In case you're wondering, Mommy, she's doing fine. And she tell me stories about you, Papa, all the time. So when I'm down and out, lonely, you're just feeling blue. All I do, dad, dad, is think of you. The thoughts alone erase my fears and dries my tears. I'm just writing to let you know we all care. I love you. Really, really love, love you, Daddy. I miss you. I miss you, and I know my brothers and sisters do too. Yeah, I peace, I like that. Really, really love you. I miss you. I miss you. Oh, Let ja. me tell you. I'm gonna tell you all the time too. You know what I mean? You know, I say you, you is my foundation. My, you wasn't only my brother, but you was my friend. Uh, and you was still my is. father figure. Still is? Still is, still is, still is. You're but not your and, father figure anymore, because you're not your father figure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? In that sense, we're in, you sure know, you instill the discipline and make sure that, you know what I mean, we stay focused on the task ahead and make sure we, you know, stay true to ourselves. Sure. And you're still someone who, if not the only person whom I really idolize to a certain extent, you know what I mean? You, 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 everything. From the way I drive, everything, from the way I sit down in my car, from, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mr. Idol, well, you don't know already. You heard that, Marlon? Like, enough time, me remember them time, like sometime when you're there at college and all, I left to go play all the way again. As you left me read the classic, come no, on, no. look just like you. Oh, hold on. No, let me tell you something, Joseph, let me tell you what my yeah. brother, right? So I live on the door where you am, right? <laughs> and of course, I go shopping, you know? But Kimani, he is my brother. I don't got a so shop. He shows up at my door. <laughs> I shop in his closet. <laughs> and take all my All the clothes. nice stuff. Not oh, all of it, the nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I come back like, where's all my stuff? But you know what? I, what am I going to argue with my little brother? I can't argue. That's I'm what like, little brothers are for. Cheers to that. Little brothers oh, are for shit. taking all their brother's <laughs> stuff. What is most important to us as your bigger brothers, right? Because like you said in your, your song, 
you never really get to grow it with daddy yeah. as as an older boy, you know? Yeah. Like we, as your older brother, is just four years older. Right, right. And five years and seven right. years older. But when you're five, we're 10 or, right. and such. So we have right. a better understanding and we had the opportunity to grow with daddy and to, to, to really understand some of the messaging. But to see our younger bloods, our younger brothers, to be able to accept this truth as young lads, yeah. Man, it's impressive to us, man. It's it's really beautiful, you know, to know that we all are aligned in the way through legacy, yeah. to the almighty, yeah. spirituality, the way we eat. There's seven brothers, and I'll tell you something, I can't tell us apart. Yeah. It's just a blessing that we get a chance to be together here in Montego Bay, and man, I love you, bro. And love thank you, you too, for, bro. like, stopping by the crib because oh, man, I know you got on, those man. boys in the yeah, family waiting on you. Love you, All day. Every day. All day. All day, every day. Tomorrow, as we continue our journey around Jaland, I'm taking you to James Bond Beach. So stay tuned. Good morning, Jamaica. After an amazing first day around the island, we're back on the road, and for our first stop, I'm taking you to Ochi, where we're going to check out Bali's Kaya Herb House, the first Jamaican legal dispensary. Right after a quick walk on James Bond Beach, where the first movie, Dr. No, was filmed. Yeah, we're in St. Anne's, Jamaica. We're at Bally's place, Kaya Herb House. My friend Domingo Zapata flew all the way from New York City to bless us with some artwork. He's gonna do a nice mural piece for Bali right now. This is me, hermano, from Mallorca, Domingo Zapata. He's a multi-talented artist, most known as the next Warhol for his pop art paintings. Oh, I just thought about it right now. <laughs> no, no, no. I had an idea I thought I would do because, you know, I think art is about composition. And when I look at this space, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's a composition of different elements that will create the energy in this area, which I think is very spiritual and peaceful and, and loving. So I want to create something like that. Yeah, my dad was um, had a car shop, painted cars. And, and I don't remember a day in my life without painting or drawing. Which at the beginning of when I was a kid, it was really annoying for everybody because I would like paint everywhere, no? But now they call me and when I go back to Mallorca, they're like, you want to come stay over? <laughs> Maybe paint something while you are? Do you get nervous when you see white walls? Uh, yeah, yeah, anxiety, <laughs> anxiety. You know the feeling is somebody like, you know, you get in a fight with your girlfriend, she's like, you know, at your throat and you can sure. breathe. That's exactly how I feel when I see a white wall. <laughs> Oh, I can breathe now. <laughs> In fact, I started painting these flowers because Picasso used to say that every child has an artist inside us. The problem is to keep the artist inside us as the child becomes a man, no? So I went and saw what I was doing when I was a child. What was I painting and drawing? And I was doing these flowers. So the reason I make them very naive like that is because I'm trying to replicate the spirit of the kid that was in me when I was growing up and I was trying to create something. You no, know? it's pure and it's very simple, but at the same time, it's finished. It gives you this vibe of, like I said, very positive and innocent. You know, the bird is because years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and I was working on this project with him for some Spanish lyrics. He always used to say to me, I love pajaritos amarillos in Spanish. So in his honor, I always put a yellow bird in my paintings. <laughs> oh, no. So the yellow bird is Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, the, wow. it's his spirit, yeah. Oh, wow. So it's the spirit, yeah. you know? And then the fish is representation of life, but also fishes don't have much memory. And it represents that sometimes you have to forget and forgive and move on. Because there's so much more to life and, and it's so short. And the weight is heavy. Exactly. Everybody's gonna die, but not everybody leaves. Mm -hmm. Go on and live and enjoy and, and try to appreciate those little details of beauty that happen to you every day. They might become more than in the long term, a big goal being achieved, no? Well, Gong had a quote, right? Live the life you love, love the life you live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know something, bro? When you said you were coming to Jamaica, right? And you're like, I want to give something, I want to give my art, I want to do something for the kids. And being so that you just popped up out of nowhere, <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> and the only thing I can do, that's something I know will be here forever and everyone can actually see this. Enjoy. I have to call Bali. I'm like, yo, dude, Domingo's coming in. <laughs> I need a wall. <laughs> I need a wall now. <laughs> so Domingo, I guess you're gonna have to come back and do another one. We're doing it. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it for the school. I wanna do a yeah. workshop. Oh yeah. 
and help the kids get some self-esteem. You know, all these kids that are, you know, they need to believe in themselves. And art is a great way to do it because, like I said, and like Picasso said, every child has an artist inside, and we need to take advantage of that. It's beauty. And voila. <laughs> and helping kids believe in themselves to achieve greatness is the mission of Lennox and Violet Lewis, League of Champions. I remember when we were looking at schools, we came in and there was a group of boys talking. And I just, you know, get in the conversation and start talking. I said, well, what do you want to be? You know, what is your greatness? The child who was nine, I had to ask him his age, because he says, what is greatness? What do you mean? I don't have any greatness within. I said, yes, you do. I do not want to tell you what he told me he was going to be. And it was not something that I ever envisioned a child to say that he wanted to be. He's at camp, and well, when you ask him what's his greatness, he tells you, I want to be an artist, I can draw. Violet Lewis co-founded this association with her husband Lennox, and I'm curious to know how everything got started. The foundation got started because of divine intervention. I'm Jamaican, as you're aware, yes. and Lennox has a Jamaican background too. But I migrated at a very early age and had the opportunity of going to university and choosing psychology as my major. Mm -hmm. Coming back on vacation and seeing that children were on the street begging, I changed my major and I decided to go back to school and pursue a master's degree in social work. While I was pursuing that degree, I met Lennox. So I always knew I was coming home, I just didn't know when. when yeah. <laughs> I wanted to finish up my degrees, I wanted to have that doctorate. Yeah. Met this man and my life turned completely. <laughs> Ended up coming back to Jamaica earlier than I anticipated. And that's what I mean by divine intervention. Sure. He has a platform, I have the background. We started talking and I realized that he always says that he's a product of generosity. Sure. So generosity meaning that when he was in Canada, uh, you know, a man took him under his wing because he was getting into trouble, and he, that's how we ended up into boxing. So I remember when our son was 11 months old, we were sitting in the Trump Hotel, and we had a group, and he was explaining his vision of wanting to build from the ground up so that boys would have a place to go, particularly boys who are marginalized, who are forgotten about in society. And I remember the group there kept saying, why would you want to do that? You know, you can't do that. That's the hardest thing to do is to build from ground up. Our son was 11 months old, I'm there, and I remember looking at him and said, if that's what you want, we're going to get it. Because <laughs> as a Jamaican, I know that the place we need to start is in Jamaica. That was, our son is 13. Wow. So what you see here <laughs> has been planned yeah, sure. for years. Sure. The mission is that we inspire the next generation of champions, not just in the ring of boxing, but in life, so that they are self-sufficient, they are proud, they are confident, and that they're able to go back into their communities and be successful. So the boxing camp has become a safe haven for a lot of these boys that you see here. If more children had what we had, which was opportunity, then Jamaica and the world would not know what to do with these so-called boys that are marginalized. You see? <laughs> Usually it does. You know, I need to clarify yeah. something about the hierarchy. Let me tell you how serious he takes this. Yeah. So in the background, the administrative team pretty much are women. I don't want to be sexist, but we're actually executing. But once camp starts, yeah. it's all men. Yeah. And because he, he says only men can get these boys to be men. Uh -huh, well. I'm truly impressed by Violet. Enough respect. Coming up, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. <laughs> We're back at Hopewell High School in Lennox and Violet Lewis, League of Champions. Time for me to introduce you to the big man. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, let me tell you. All yeah. these kids are great because they love to box. Yes. And they want to be champions. Yes. And uh, each one of them have like, you know, desire to like do it. Some of them leave camp and they tell their friends and their friends want to come, so I love that. The main thing is, they're learning the proper way to box. Well, you're teaching uh, Lennox so. Lewis style. Lennox Lewis. <laughs> and me gets from Muhammad Ali. Yeah, so. yeah. See that? Straight and up, upright. That's the calm. And the feet. Yeah, show, uh, show me, show me. Show me. Show me. It's all about the... It's, yeah. <laughs> 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 
The next Lewis, a.k.a. the Pugilist Specialist, is one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. He's a three-time world heavyweight champion and the last heavyweight to hold the undisputed title. He has been presented by both the Order of Canada and the most excellent order of the British Empire. They underestimate your size for your catness. Yes, <laughs> like, a, yes. like a cat. That's true. <laughs> on your toes. Always on your toes. Always throwing that jab, you know? Mm -hmm. I I was amazed. You know, growing up watching you, I mean... I never had a chance to watch like Muhammad Ali live. So it's nice to see the greatness and to touch greatness. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? All those days, I mean, like I was telling the kids about watching you when I was in college and how it inspired me to go out there and be a champion. Yeah, because man. first of all, you're going into chase those crazy ballets. I tell you, you know, and, and giant, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's maximum love. Yo, you don't know how powerful that song is. You do know. Yeah, yeah, all but right. I mean, what you, you took it to another level where you incorporated the music into your, like... Persona. Your, 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 yeah, your energy. It's yeah. like, I used to get the goosebumps, bro, when you walked in the room. <laughs> like, I was like, yo! Like, uh, yo, watch this, watch <laughs> this! <laughs> yo, awesome. man, you don't know how powerful that song is, bro, believe me. It really helped me. Getting ready for the fight? Yeah. It was like, yo, yeah, this is what I'm gonna go do. Chasing all the crazy ballads around. Yeah. Chasing them out of the ring. And win. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you was fighting Mike Tyson. That was like... Yeah. See, I, was, I was watching Tyson after. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was obviously watching my fight over. And he knew the music. When the music started going, he knew I was coming. He went... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox often used one of my dad's songs, Crazy Ballhead, for his ring entry. Me and Mike Tyson, we had to fight. Yeah. Because anytime you get any haircut, there's always that argument with the barbers. It, Who's going to win? Yeah. You know, they're always saying Mike Tyson was going to win. I, me, I, obviously, I felt I was going to win. Yeah. But in order for us to prove that, we needed to get in the ring. So we <laughs> finally got in the ring, yeah. and that was it. That was, that was it. good. Even, even if they would have called that fight a draw, draw yeah. people would have still seen the matchup between me sure, and Sure, sure, because yeah. we wanted that. Yeah. And you gave us that. You didn't run from one fight. <laughs> you stepped away a champion. You didn't. It was very yeah. important. Yeah. It was important to do that because I just want to be a champion. I've accomplished all my goals. I've got rid of all the misfits in boxing. Became champion for a long while. It's time to put down the gloves. Because as I was growing as a, as a boxer, and I would tell people Muhammad Ali was my hero, they would say, oh yeah, but didn't you think he carried on a bit too much? And that was always sticked in, right, in my right, mind. Right. And I said, okay, I got to retire at the right time. You know, I see, see myself in some of the kids because I used to be naughty. I, I used to didn't want to listen. Yeah. You know, anybody used to bother me, I wanted to fight. Yeah. So I didn't know about conflict resolution. <laughs> so by coming to camp and seeing these different things that the kids are coming with, this is, gives me an opportunity to talk to them and be a father and a mother to them. Something that they don't get mm -hmm. or they don't have. Yes. And I think that's important. And they, they all they want to know is that you care about sure. them and that they respect you. Sure. And they want to hear the right thing. Sure. If you tell them the right thing, they'll listen because they want to be good. They want to be just like you. Right. And I tell them, you know, first it starts with respecting yourself. Yes. And then respect others. Like, say, if two guys have a fight or just looking at each other, you know, it stumps it out by both of them going, respect. That means yeah. I respect you, you respect me. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And there's no war. I really want these kids to learn yes. is um, just respect and the fact that they, they can do things that uh, maybe other people said they couldn't do. Uh, they don't really know themselves like they should. You know, this brings out dedication hard work, sacrifice, yes. all these different traits you need to learn and be aware of. These are traits that are gonna help you in life. Sure. You know, not being late. You know, even that, just to learn that. When they come to camp and they're late, they have to do running. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is what happens when you're late. Yeah. Like, do more running. There's so they, Yeah, there's consequences on everything that you do, so you have to make the right choices. Choices. So if we partake a little something from us and they take it, if we teach them 10 things and they learn two, I'm still happy, because yeah, well, at least they learn two. Yeah, they're learning. Well, right now it's up to me to part partake. Yeah all what I know sure. and give it to the youths. Sure. So that's what I'm doing. Give it to the young kids, the future champions, our future. And you know, you've been talking about this a long time, about what you're gonna do in Jamaica. And I mean, but who could have done a better job than you, the champion, coming to your country and setting up down here in Hanover 
like some place for the youths to develop their craft, man. Yeah, let me tell you, it's gonna be all over Jamaica because right now Jamaica's yeah. fiending for boxing. You, you, you know, you go anywhere, anywhere and talk about boxing, people love it. So they need an amateur system where each parish can try out for their, win their parish and all of a sudden become uh, champions of Jamaica, then go to the Olympics. So this is what I want to help Jamaica with and accomplish, doing that and create some young superstars, create some young champions. Because like I said, you know, we're fast in the running, <laughs> we're good in the swimming. Yeah. Boxing, we're good in too. So yeah, we yeah, just have to. It's like, it's like we, we got a whole heap, yeah, we got a little whole heap of flowers that need to be nurtured over here in boxing. Sure. And uh, we're gonna have some champions, guaranteed. Oh man, amazing, yeah, man. man. It's, it's like it's a dream of mine to really have the opportunity to even hear some of the stories. You know, it's yeah, like man. I wanted to share with the world some of the things that you're doing in the community here in Jamaica. I appreciate that, my Not that you're, yeah, yeah, because man. everyone sees you, yeah. your after boxing career, everyone yeah. sees you commentating, everyone sees you out in the world, but they really don't get a chance to know what you're doing on the ground here in Jamaica. Right, okay. Yeah, lion on. Yes, the <laughs> real lion. <laughs> yeah, they give thanks, you know? Yeah, man. And that joy, and I'm so happy you give me a few moments of your time. Thank brother. you, thank you. Rasta thanks for visiting. Right, yes, you. Man. And, and, and the League of Champions, the Lennox Lewis Boxing Camp. Looking forward to supporting it forever and ever because we have a lot of champs here, you know? Yeah. See? Lennox and Violet are true inspiration for I and our people. Seeing how committed they are to their mission, I know that our children will achieve greatness. <laughs> Blessed love. What a fantastic journey around Jaland. On this road trip, I wanted to make you discover amazing people and amazing places. From delicious food, to wonderful art, to the strong rum, to international legends working for the future of our youth. And I hope this helped you to better understand our island. The sun is setting on our day, so it's time for I to build back and let Kimani run the road and talk about what he's doing for his community in Falma. Jaja. Um, you know, it's been a while now since the center here has been dilapidated and pretty much in ruins. I took it upon myself, being that I am from this place here, you know, and I remember my childhood leaving from my home, not too far away from the center, and walking here to the center and being able to enjoy, you know, football, being able to play some table tennis, being able to, to sit with friends and play as domino, and for a while we didn't have that, so we find that a lot of these young men now ended up in the street doing everything that they're not supposed to be doing. I don't want to say it became my responsibility, but in, in, in so many words, I felt as though it being in the state of and me being in a position where I can help and make something better, that it was my duty, you know what I mean, to make sure that I helped to rebuild a community that was pretty much no longer there. There's nothing here. There's no movie theaters. There is no, you know, you know, you have a little party here and there, but there is no attraction. So we find that Sunday daytime for us was the attraction, and the attraction has always been football, you know. And football is also my first passion before music. <laughs> we are a very proud set of people, and we truly believe that whatever we do, we do it the best. And so it's important for us to make sure that what we are saying actually comes to the forefront. You know, and we have never really been ones to, to settle for, for mediocre. You know, so you find that we are always trying to add something to what's already there. Um, and that goes for not just the athletes, but for, our, you know, the musicians, for our actors, for our, you know, just we as a people, we as, we, we as a culture. You know, I say it a lot of time that for me, we in Jamaica, there's a, there's a vibration that we move to, you know what I mean? And everything, to the sounds that you hear around from the cars passing on the street, to the football, we have the ocean behind us, everything plays a part in that melody. You know what I mean? So everything becomes, becomes one. So much